you pass the team sheet. Thank you. And we're live. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Welcome back to the Alpha and Town official watch along for Hereford versus Offton tonight. We have arrived moments ago, which is why everything's a bit all over the place at the moment. Is it just. <laughs> we're a bit all over. The teams are out. So I, while Quinn tries to sort this out, I will read the lineups for you as I disappear off the screen. Uh, number one for. Alfreton is George Willis in goal. Number two, Joshua Claxton. Number four, Adam Lund. Number five, Kennedy Diggy. Number six, Dwayne Wilde. Number eight, George Cantrell. Number nine, Jake Adair. Number 14, Sean Prisley. 22, Billy Fuster. 23, Nathan Newell. 24, Jerry McDonough. And on the bench is Jordan Thewlis, Lewis Salmon, Jake Askew, Ryan Taylor. And new signing for Alfreton, Max Ram, the Hereford lineup tonight is number one, Curtis Ponding Goal, number two, Aaron Skinner, number three, Lewis Hudson, number four, Oreo Teixeira, number six, Paul Downing, number seven, Yusuf Cisse, number eight, Alex Bavos, number nine, Jason Cowley, number 16, Jid Okiki, number 21, Lasana Mendes, number 27, Nathan Cameron, and on the bench is number 10, Andy Williams, number 12, Shea Sterry, number 21, Holly Southern, number 22, Adam Rooney, number 31, Kieran Phillips, and there we have done it moments before kick off i've rushed through it we've got it done we're here we're inside today which is a bit of a difference so now i've got a hat on for no reason uh, <laughs> even though it's not cold in here it's nice and toasty and you've turned me off i can't hear the player back there you Thank go you. Well, that, there we go that's better oh sorry yep and Billy Fuster that gets us under here to go. <laughs> diggy pings it over the top towards jake dear and we have literally got live and ready by a thread tonight and that, that was close. Yeah. Sorry, I do have to apologise personally that I had, I had to work until 5.30 and it's a two-hour journey here. So we had 14 yep. minutes from the car to the press box through various different um, <laughs> entrances and press passes and all, and, all the, uh, and all those exciting all things. All the exciting things behind the scenes. QR codes to access the ground. We're underway and we're live. We're underway and what I didn't get to mention when reading out the team sheet is that this is Joshua Claxton's 200th appearance for the club tonight. Big congratulations to him. As Alfred and Havith throw in inside the run half, Adam Lund preparing to take it. A long throw forward, as always, flicked on by Jake Day. Very nice setup, actually, here at uh, Hereford as the Bulls take on Alfreton in what is a massive game for the playoffs. Very important game indeed for those of us in and around those playoff places, the well, top seven by the first so. A win tonight for both teams is very, very important as Hereford knock a goal kick, goal kick long forward, but it's won by Dwayne Wiley. Booted forward by Billy Fuster as Jerry McDonough comes in in a mix-up between the goalkeeper and the centre-half as Jerry McDonough comes away with the ball and he puts it across the box. Jake Day is there, but it's a sliding challenge, I believe, from Oreo Teixeira, who... Stops Jake Day converting into the empty net after a mix-up between the goalkeeper and one of his centre-halves. Saw Jerry McDonough get the ball across the box, but it'll be a corner, or is it a throw-in? I can't quite see. I believe it's a throw-in, actually. Oh, no, it is a corner. Corner on the near side. After filling the six-yard box. Gone deep. Adam Lund back across. Sean Brisley up now. George Cantrell putting it back in there, but Curtis Pond comes and claims the looping header by George Cantrell back into the area. Goalkeeper taking his time now, organising his team, and Oreo Teixeira drops in deep and looks to switch it long towards Cissé. The ball now into the number nine, Jason Cowley, looking to keep control of it. He plays it out to the fullback on the far side. Aaron Skinner, who spreads the ball even wider, now one-on-one -on -one with Nathan Newell. 
Cross comes in, blocked by Newell, looping up towards the back oh. post for Cissé, but it's headed away by it. Joshua Claxton, who's got in front of his man. The referee's given a goal kick. Probably not the right decision there, but... I don't think we need to go with probably on that one. No, that definitely, it, it, definitely Josh Claxton's headed the ball straight out for what should have been a Hereford corner, but the referee saw it as a Yusuf Cissé header that went over the bar and Alfredton have been awarded a goal kick. We won't complain. The people in front of us are. Yeah, it's a... But we're enclosed. We're in a nice little box today. Yeah, so no one's no one can harm us. <laughs> we're at arm's reach. It is a full stand here in the southwest. Ball lump forward by George Willis, headed back, but only as far as Ken Diggy, who can loop another header forward. Jake Day brings it down well for Jerry McDonough. Jerry McDonough... Cuts in on his left foot. Nathan Newell out on that far side, giving him an option, but he comes back, finds George Willis in the gap, who goes into a 50-50 with Teixeira. Teixeira comes out the winner, flicked on by Cowley, and now it's Cissé out on the wing on the left. He looks to cross into the area. Sean Brisley clears. Billy Fuster looking to put some pressure on Lewis Hudson now. He leaves as Adam Lund comes over to support. He plays it to Yusuf Cissé. He gives it back to Teixeira. His first touch looks to come inside. Tidy first touch. Billy Fuster looking to shepherd in. The ball comes very, very hard across the area by Lewis Hudson. Ball with a lot of venom across the area, but no players in white arriving. Heading away now, Billy Fuster looking to pressure Teixeira who gets the ball out wide. Cissé now on the ball, back to Teixeira who is pulling all the strings for Hereford in the early stages of this game. Ball now spread out to, I believe that is Nathan Cameron. Yes it is. Carries the ball out. Looks to play the ball into Jason Cowley in the middle. Gets the ball back out wide. Neat football from Hereford as Skinner skips past his man, loops it up towards the far post where Cissé was. It goes over his head. He'll keep it in to stop it going out for an Alfred and throw in. As Claxton applies pressure and blocks the pass and Hereford will win a throw in despite, despite Claxton's protests that it had taken a deflection off. Oh, and Hudson slips the ball between the legs of Claxton and then oh, between the legs of Lund and he looks to put the ball across the box but it's cleared away by Briz looped up from Teixeira and out towards the back force headed towards goal deals with it but easily. only I believe that's Lasana Mendes out on the f no sorry not Lasana I did it Akiki headed it into the hands of Adam Lund oh god it's nice take your time Willis because we are very very flustered following um Obviously, a late arrival at the ground to get this underway as quickly as possible. Answer in the question in the, in the uh, comments. We're playing in yellow tonight. Hereford in in red. In white. Um, uh, sorry, <laughs> in white. That shows how late we. <laughs> yeah, we've had a, a traumatic, stressful last yeah. afternoon. Not to mention some of the roads that we've drove do down. Not I. Deal. Paul Downing now spreading a lovely ball over to Aaron Skinner on the right hand side. Now I'm slightly confused looking at this team sheet because Hereford have a number 20 in the middle but there is no number 20 on the team sheet. Let's have a work out who we're missing on the team sheet. Looking to spread the ball from one side to the other Hudson as quick as they can. Here. Goes back to Teixeira. Back to Downing. Ah, oh, right. It says 21, but it's number 20. Number 20, Lasana Mendes is actually number 20. Nathan Newell Ooh. loses out, and it's across the box for ah. Cowley, who takes the leagues as Jidakiki dispossessed. Nathan Newell puts the ball across the box to an empty box. Only Jason Cowley there turns it in very, very easily, yeah. too easily. 
very rare from Nathan Newell that to be kind of dispossessed in that position. Um, look to kind of just get stuck on stuck on the ball um, and dispossessed probably eight yards out. Yeah, Nathan facing his own goal, the ball just kind of bounced away from him. An awkward one for him to deal with and Jada Kiki got in front of him, took the ball and he had a, just a simple five-yard pass across the six-yard box never to find Jason that. Cowley who that. was never, ever going to miss. Not a good start. It hasn't been a good start for Alfredton in these early stages of the games. Hereford mainly dominating the early stages of this game as Ken Diggy looks to get us back underway with the signature long ball from kickoff towards Jake Day who does his best to keep it in but it'll ultimately go out for a Hereford goal kick and this is not the start we wanted to see in a, ga see in a game that is massive towards our playoff hopes in any way because Hereford have moved the ball around nicely got it in wide areas and ultimately have got the better of us in those wide areas and it's led to them taking an early lead and I don't like to be critical of the boys, but it's really not a good start. No, it's not. We're not looking at it. Not really disturbed them in any way. They've, be, they've been able to do what, whatever they've wanted to do so far. Adam Lund flicks <coughs> the ball forward, but no one occupying that area on the left-hand side. Skinner with a throw in now on the far side. Throws it towards Crowley. Ta uh, challenge from Sean Brisley. Sees it come back forward. Adam Lund wins. Jerry McDonough flicks it on the corner very nicely for Billy Fuster, who looks for Jake Day over the top, who can't quite get the ball off Lewis Hudson, but Lewis Hudson can only get it out for a throw in. In a good position this for us as well. He's got opportunity to put this in a dangerous area. Chance for Adam Lund to throw it flat across the area. Willow looks to launch this towards that six yard box where I'm sure Ken Diggy will take that position on the front post looking to flick it on for someone else in the area. Adam Lund throws it towards Ken Diggy. It bounces down in the area mm. but no player in yellow there to try and turn it towards goal. Nathan Newell heads it but only as far as Texera who looks to knock it over the top for well. Alex Babos but it's one back, but Hereford continue to come forward relentlessly as Crowley found Cissé. Cissé oh. touches it past gonna get Josh bucket, yeah. Claxton, who's going to pick himself up a booking as Cissé just knocked it round mm. him. Claxton yeah, dived nice. in, wiped him out on the edge of the area. Hereford will have a chance to put the ball into the area there. Hereford just looks so much more alive in this game. Yeah, Claxton wins the, the first header there from the initial break and then something that we've been really good at this year is kind of making sure that we're picking up the, the second ball and that's on a couple of occasions now where we've won the initial header which is obviously the first contact we want to win but nowhere near the second one. ball will come in from Babos blocked by the wall but the ball's given back out to him now he's going to look to re-deliver as Claxton looks to isolate him CC now with the ball he's going to strike a shot it goes all the way through but George Willis <laughs> cups the ball into his chest I mean it's been a really really tough 12 minutes for the visiting Alfred and Town There's not much. <laughs> there's not a much more way. Bl uh, you can't put it any more bl in a more blunt way. Uh, Alfred and just don't seem to have realised how important this game is in our hopes for the playoffs. And Hereford have really started strong here. Billy Fuse now gives the ball back to Nathan Newell. Adam Lund now finds Jake Day's feet inside the 18-yard area. Gives it back out to Billy Fuster, who cuts inside past Aaron Skinner, who Ooh, looks to release a shot, block. but it is blocked from Lasana Mendez, who stopped Billy Fuster's rifled shot from getting through. Maybe 
Adam Lund has a chance to throw this into the area, but what I have noticed and the way Hereford are playing is their pitch is a lot wider than mm. pitches we've seen this season, which is going to make Adam Lund finding that six-yard area that much harder. The ball falls out to Dwayne Wiley in the box, who flicks up for Jake Day at the back post, who looked to rise high enough but couldn't turn the ball towards the goal. And it goes out for a Hereford goal kick. The leap from Jake Day was excellent. He looked like he was up there to head it into the back of the net, but just stretching a little bit too much. And the ball goes out for a goal kick. Hereford looking to build out from the back. Sent long. Ken Diggy looks to get up, in, and he does. He wins it. Jake Day now taking the ball off Texera to McDonough. Lund back out to Josh Claxon on the right-hand side. Looks to whip it into the Great area. Ball. Jake Day's up. It's up. It's turned. Oh, it's yes. It's turned into the goal, but it's given. I was still waiting yeah. for the flag to go up on the near side, but it, I believe it's Jake Day with the goal. Yep. To level the, the scores. I mean, that was all over. The ball came in from Claxton in the area. Jake Day jumped up into the air to try and head it into the goal. It was just over his head, but Billy Fuster was arriving with a man on him. I'm not sure who the man was. I believe it was Skinner on the far side. The ball came off the defender, went round the goalkeeper who was scrambling, and Jake Day was there to turn it in. Inside the six-yard box, it's very similar, not in the way the goal was scored, but the area uh, of his goal against Farsi Celtic at the weekend, right inside that goal mm. mouth who just was there to porch it in, turn it into the goal, and that's a lifeline for Alfred yeah. because they have not been in this game. They've no. got to use that momentum from the goal to get back, in well, get, get, get going, to get going in the early stages of this game because their start wasn't good enough. But the ball from Claxton there was really good and the instincts from Jake Day to pounce on what was a bit of a scramble in the area. I was waiting for... You, you didn't hear any cheer. Every, no one really knew what was going on in that scramble. And I was looking down thinking, has the flag gone up? <laughs> I'm looking, I don't see anyone celebrating. Yeah. And I was a bit confused at what had happened. But Even the players looked a bit confused there. You know, <laughs> not, none of them were celebrating. I couldn't hear any cheering. And then all of a sudden, Jack Day started celebrating. I heard all the cheers come up. So, But no. Equaliser. We're more than happy to be equal in this game because of how the, the opposition have started. <coughs> yeah, it's it's a lifeline and we've got to use it. The <coughs> ball knocked forward. Bavos brings the ball down. A great first touch, but he is judged to be offside by the assistant on the far side. That'll be... Uh, free kick George Willis will come and take that Lad. Every, I mean, I'm, I'm savouring every little break in this game <laughs> at the moment usually we get here we, well we get to the ground with plenty of time and everything gets set up and we you know do what we do and everything's a bit nicer as oh George Willis takes a free kick quickly and clips it down to Billy Fuster in the left-hand channel. He looks to get in and put the ball across the box, but Skinner, with a sliding challenge, turns the ball out for a corner for Ulfritton. Really good of Willis to, to recognise that sign, but not only recognise it, but, but play that pass. And Yeah, that's something we've done a few times I've seen this, uh, this season with Willis, just kind of pinging the ball down that channel where everyone's kind of crowded one side of the pitch. He likes to clip it down the other side yeah. for the winger making a clever run. Well, we saw it on Sunday, uh, sorry, on Saturday where everyone loaded the box expecting the big throw. It's gone short. and we've Well, a corner comes low from, I'm not sure who took that. I think Billy Fuster. Oh, she is as CC, is it, I'm not sure who it is. Is I think it might be. Into our final third. He, yeah, they come forward, out to Crowley on the left, who looks to put it across, but Claxton foul gets there. Claxton. And well done, good decision. The referee judges a foul as Crowley was stretching to put that ball across the area. He was stretching to put the ball across, and Claxton turned out for what would have been a corner, but the trailing leg was a bit too much for the referee, and he's judged it to be a foul. So Willis will have a chance to take another one of these kicks, a free kick inside the half around the area. 
we are looking. We've got oh, I'm trying. I'm just looking across. Darlow have taken the lead. Uh, for life. I'm trying to see what else we've got. It's Notts County have taken the lead against Crawley. Come on's jeering around the ground by Hereford as Willis takes his time to take it. He's up towards Jake Day, but it's headed away. And it's out for a Hereford throbbing now on the far side. Just Can we just update us for the scores around the ground. So Darlington has, like he says, 1 0 up. And Notts County have taken the lead at 1 0 as well. And Broken forward, Brisley. That's the only away. goal around the grounds. Three games off today. Banbury United, Boston United. Bishop Stortford, obviously our opposition on Saturday. versus Kings Lynn was called off. Um, and then Spenny Moore Scunthorpe also off. Dwayne Wiley gets in front of Crowley to intercept. He's going to go all the way back to Willis in the off and goal. He's got plenty of time. He's going to bring it out of his area and look to knock it forward it was towards Billy Fuster who slipped but it's a miss hit clearance from Aaron Skinner so Alfred and I'll have a throw in now at the round the area where the final third begins maybe a bit further back than that by the looks of it there's not a lot of space for Adam Lund to take his run up to get that I mean, they've not moved the advertising boards like we've seen some clubs do this year on a, on our arrival. Yeah, it's launched in by Lund towards Diggy, headed away. George Cantrell loops it back up. Jerry McDonough brings it down. Jake Day now puts it back across the area. Cleared. Nathan Newell with possession now. Gives it back to Clacky, who thumps it to in towards the area, but it's headed away by Cameron. And now Crowley will have a chance to come forward who's looked to thread it through for a Kiki on that far side looks to come inside Cantrell's brilliant. as well Cantrell does what he can and a turn into the area Hereford asking but for a foul not given they're looking really dangerous on the break when we're looking yeah. to load oh, that's got to be better Lund looks to put it through to Billy Fuster but it's blocked Clacky now out to Jerry McDonough McDonough lays it back off to Clacky Looks to go inside, but intercepted by Down Six. <coughs> Down in, and B Billy Fuster wins a challenge against Aaron Skinner to head it back into the Hereford half, who are happy to let it go out for a throw in. I'm just trying to get familiar with all of the Hereford numbers at the moment, so I I'm can work out who is who at what time. And the throw from is taken a one two between Skinner and Babos. Skinner now plays it out to down down in, in that left centre half space. It's closed down by Jake Day, but cuts back onto his favourite right foot and looks over the top for Yusuf Cisse, who nearly keeps it in. Claxton was there to apply pressure if he did. Clacky looking to roll the ball down the line as Jerry McDonough and Jake Day make the way over to the right hand side of the pitch to challenge for this more jeers from the crowd as Clacky takes his sweet time to take the throw in Brisley dumps the ball high up into the air as Jerry McDonough looks to knock it on but down in heads it back towards the keeper and it's not going to come into his area so the keeper volleys it out for a throw in just next to the dugout. <coughs> it's weird commentating in a room. Yeah, we've not done it yet. Um, there seems to be a bit more, a bit less ambience, isn't there? <laughs> bit of an echo. Yeah, as Lundy looks to throw the ball into the area. It's headed away. CC are now going to give chase, but it's going to go back out, and Adam Lundy is going to get another chance to throw the ball into the area. Lundy committing football's biggest crime of stealing yards on a throw in. As he always does, if the referee, he'll do it until the referee pulls him up. 
Darlington away go a bit. It's thrown in. It's a really good throw, and it drops down in the area, but it's cleared away by Lasana Mendes. That could have easily fell into the path of somebody to smash it in. Yeah, and George Willis now looking to hook the ball back forward. Oh, offside Flick, flag. Flicked on by Sean Brisley, but the assistant raises his flag and judges him to be offside. Pretty quiet around the grounds. One other goal, obviously only going to Darlington. No other goals across the league. Yeah, Briz goes up to challenge against Crowley and he wins and knocks it forward, but wins a free kick as referee judged that Crowley did a bit too much to try and win that ball back and Alfred will have a free kick and Willis will come and take to knock it forward. Just taking another look around the grounds. Chesterfield have taken the lead against Oxford City. Fair amount of moaning. Don't know if it's for Willis taking his time. Politely called the Pele of time wasting. <laughs> yes. On social media this week. Wayne Wiley looks to strike on his left foot and the free a free kick was given. Referee yeah, uh, getting crowded by Hereford players asking for what? Wiley to be booked for kicking the ball away and someone I believe it, who's picked that up I'm not quite 100% sure no I mean um, I think it might be Lasana Mendes has picked up a booking Mendes yeah, yeah Mendes booked for his protests I don't think that was he was He'd already wound up the shot, I think. Yeah, he was winding up the shot, the whistle went, and he still let it go. And that caused question among some of the Hereford players on the pitch, but the protests were a bit too strong as Peter Response takes the lead against Buxton. Pond steps up to take the free kickers. Multiple yellow bodies come forward to pressure Hereford. It's a fast, long Crowley can flick it on, but only towards Dwayne Wiley. And Willis now is going to thump it towards Jerry McDonough, who goes up for a challenge against Lewis Hudson, but no one gets a connection with the ball, and it'll go out for a throw in as Curzon Ashton take the lead against Spenny Moore. Was it, is it Spenny Moore they're playing? Uh, sorry, Scarborough. And two S's, you know. Curzon and uh, Scarborough. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, you know, it's. Uh, I've made worse, mis worse mistakes. Uh, <laughs> Clacky heads the ball forward now towards Billy Fuster, who loses out to Skinner and to Kiki. Nope. Flicks it inside for the referees. Played a good advantage there for, for them. Looks inside for whistle to his mouth. See, sir, but all the way through to Willis, who is once again the pillar of time wasting. Is taking his sweet, <laughs> sweet time. With the ball at his feet here, waiting for someone to close him down. And honestly, I feel like the only reason he's doing this is because he's seen that. <laughs> he's seen that he's been called the fellow of time wasting. But that's that's not time wasting. The ball's in play. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he, he's literally waiting for someone to close him down. He's not. He's, it's not. It's not. Um, I think he's. I think he's li laughing it up a bit because. I'd like to think he's laughing it up a bit because I've never seen him do that. <laughs> Davos now with the ball, looks to back heel it in behind towards Cissé, but Briz will knock it back to Willis, who knocks it forward towards Jake Day, who looks to flick it on, but it's out, and Alfred will have a throw in near the dugout, the away dugout where Billy stands. So check around the grounds as Hereford Grove more and more frustrated by the time wasting going on here as South Shields take the lead against Charlie Frobin comes in headed away George Cantrell looks to head it back towards the area Teixeira wins it plays it Newell looks to pump it back forward but his clearance will run all the way back through and out for a goal kick for Hereford 
Hereford fans chanting at the referee, feeling he's need to do more to hurry the game along. Well, George Cantrell wins the ball high, gives it back to Jerry McDonough, who cuts into the middle of the pitch, goes all the way back to Nathan Newell, who flicks the ball up for Billy Fuster, who so far. can't quite get it under control. Zakiki comes away with it, gives it to Teixeira, who is pulled by Galloway, Cantrell. Oh, the, referee is, the referee's pushed George Cantrell there. No, no bookings there. No. Down he looked like he was going to push to Cameron Shaw over. from the crew kick. Skinner now looks to find Babos in the half space, who heads it down into a nice area, but no one occupying the space, and Willis will come and collect, and once again he's going <laughs> to waste time. I want to see his play, though. Yeah, like it's um, it's a bit it's a bit too early in the game for me, um, but I'm not paid to coach the team. <laughs> Jake Day looks to chest it down. Adam London a challenge is cleared away, but it only comes as far as George Cantrell gives it back to Clarkie, who's going to look to put it into the area. Up towards Day, into Billy Fuster, oh, who strikes, oh. and it's in. That's gone in. It's an absolutely oh, fantastic tra strike from Billy Fuster, oh, Billy, as it's it, knocked boy. down by, <laughs> he's running round. Like he's r <laughs> That's a unique celebration. We've not seen that one yet, but that strike was fantastic. Knocked down by Jake Day, and he rifled it off the top, off the bar off the post and into the back of the net it looked like it come back out 20 <laughs> 21 of the players on the pitch except Billy Fuster stood still as they were unsure if the ball had ended up in the back of the net but the assistant linesman waved his flag to signal it had gone over the line and Alfred have taken a lead in the game that they were massively under pressure in, in the first 15 minutes but since they got a gifted goal, really, a goal from nothing, they've held their own in this game, not really been dominated in the wide areas since that goal. But they've not really... It's been a very end-to-end -end game um, since the equaliser. And now Billy Fuster rifles an absolute beauty into the top corner of the Bulls net, knocked down by Jake Day following another great ball into the area from Joshua Claxton. It was a great strike. It I mean, was. It came as I was trying to plug the laptop in, and I just caught it. it he looked surprised it went in. That I mean, I thought it crossed the line. We're a long way from it, but I, from here it looked like it had. Um, and we were just waiting for the for the linesman's indication. Honestly, I think that makes its way quite nicely into the top three goals of the season. When I think of our best goals, I think Newell yeah. against Worthing, Wiley against Scunthorpe at home, and then probably that. Ken Is Diggy against... Um, Ken Diggy against Blythe, yeah, going round three or four. And then from the halfway line, but... He did get some stick on the bus on the way back on Saturday for doing a step over <laughs> on the edge of the opposition box. Centre-halves, who did not think they are? I know. But... Maybe that early time wasting <laughs> is now warranted now that we've taken the lead. But honestly, Ken Diggy's goal against Blythe was great to go around those players. But the sheer power and technique Billy Fuster used there to find that, that he does not get more. There isn't a goalkeeper on the planet that had saved that. I mean, if you put any other goalkeeper in the net that you can think of, I don't think they'd have saved that because it was struck so hard and so powerful and it was so like bar post and in. You've not got a chance, and wow! I mean, I d there's not much more you could do to describe it. It is an absolute beauty as Buxton equalise against Peterborough Sports in Peterborough. Sure, it'll be full of fans enjoying that game. Down in our look to clout with a defence. He looks for a ball out wide to Skinner, but he has to stretch to get there before Fuster. And a Kiki with a really nice flick around Nathan Newell. Lund's there to support, though. And Cantrell knocks the ball over the top. Fuster not running in behind due to his defensive duties. And it seems almost as is Jerry McDonough's playing on this right hand side mm. with Liam Waldock missing. Billy Fuster coming into the side on the left wing. Yeah, Jerry we've, not, we've not seen. When we've seen Jake and Jerry on the pitch together, we've kind of seen them playing much closer and kind of Jerry playing off off Jake. 
Um, it's not the case today. It looks as though we're kind of seeing Jerry on the right, which is obviously a position we've not seen him in so far since he's been at the club. Um, he's played down the middle every time he's played. Um, yeah, I just think what Jerry gives you, holding up the ball, though, um, is, is, is knowledge of his teammates on the pitch, although he's not been here very long. He kind of brings that ball down and he just flicks it into a space where someone's running into. And I think you really, this side really struggles if you lose that, but you can't deny the goal-scoring form and the impact Jake Day's had on the squad. When he's mm. come off the bench, he makes such a difference. So I'm really, really happy to see them working together. Adam Lund throws a long throw into the area. And like I said on Saturday, ball into the box, Ken Diggy. Ken Diggy flicks it. Oh, oh no, no, that's a oh, superb goal. header from Kennedy Diggy. The ball came back into the box from Adam Lund following his initial throwing, came out to Dwayne Wiley, who passed it back out to him. A great from ball into distance, the area. And Ken Diggy from maybe 15 yards out <laughs> flicks on a header over <laughs> Curtis Pond in the goal and into the back of the net for his fifth goal of the season. And this game has been turned on its head. I mean, if you watch the first 10 minutes of this match, Rob, you'd have think that the score had been 3-1 to Hereford, maybe 3-0 yeah, because 3 it was. It looked like it was going to be a long night. And that great cross into the area from Claxton saw Jake Day get us back on level terms in what was a gift, a lifeline in this game. And Billy Heath's side have grabbed that lifeline and ran with it. And now they find themselves 3-1 up. <laughs> After 35 minutes. <laughs> Liam, Adam Lund, Liam. It, no, he's, he's not listening. No, he wants to know who crossed the ball. It was Adam Lund. I wait till he brings his head back into our room before yeah. I... Uh, it's nice being inside. We couldn't get away with this Alfton in our, in our press box. Two ground level, but... I oh, thought, this is nice. Yeah. Just uh, the lack of ambience is throwing me a bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like I can hear myself too much. You miss <laughs> plus Adam Lund put the cross in, Liam. Thank you. Yeah, I heard you. Yeah. When, um, when we're uh, in and around the fans, sometimes I worry that we're going to get... Ooh. Oh, Billy Fuster finds himself in behind, looks to cut back onto his favoured right foot, gets stuck underneath his feet a bit, and he has Downing and Skinner on him. He manages to get Takes the ball out. into the area, but it's a bit over hit and it's going to come out over to... I'm not, I think it's Cissé on the near side towards all the way back and he Never looks a to find Crowley, or Cowley sorry, down the line whose first touch goes out for a throw-in. The Hereford fans appealing for a free kick. They're not giving it. Alfred will have a throw-in around the dugout area again. Somebody on this near side is trying to get the attention of the referee. And Clacky goes all the way back to Willis who... Looks to lump it forward. No one there. Challenge is mm. going to go all the way through to Curtis Pond in the Hereford goal. And I, I mean, I am really thrown off by the scoreline in this game <laughs> because I was watching the early stages of this game and it just looked like we weren't going to show up. It looked like... You judged us too early, Matty. Yeah. We just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it I wrote us off after 11 minutes. No, I, it just looked like one of them ones where we didn't realise how... This, this is a really... I cannot stress how important this game is for our season in the push for the playoffs. I mean, Hereford in and around us. It's, I mean, even in the, the Bulls blog preview to this game where they really made it clear that they were not happy that we were coming <laughs> for the style of football we played, um, that this was a playoff six-pointer where we are around each other in the leagues. And it's, it, it, I, I, th I do think it was more important for Hereford to win this game than us. I think it was imperative that they win this game and they looked like they'd come to do business in the early stages of this game. But that must be so deflating, you know. Ooh, oh, CC flicks it over Claxton and he looks to come oh. into the area and he goes past a few players. Oh. And oh, he looked wow. like he was going to finish it and bring Hereford back into wow. this game. But the legs That'd of George the goal Willis. Of the game. That first touch over Claxton. It, I don't think anyone's done that to him in his 200, ga 200 games for no, the club. The his first you have touch to watch that back on the highlights if Hereford puts them out or you get to watch National League TV. Up and it's over Claxton's head. He comes into the box as Brisley comes in and he cuts in on his right foot and players scrambling wily and clacky trying to get in there and he releases his shot but Willis does really, really well to save it to keep the score at 3-1 and to keep that two-goal cushion. As Brisley heads the ball out of touch for a Hereford throw in. I think we saw on Saturday with this being. Oh, oh wow, wow, wow. Okay. It's comical because 
So Hereford managed to just come over and caught the ball and give it to his player to try and get the ball back in play as quickly as possible. And the referee's blown his whistle as <laughs> Jerry McDonough sat down with an injury. I think what we saw on Saturday was we were obviously playing Farsley, who we'd we'd been by far the better team. But at 3-1, they, they'd, they'd only scored a goal that was given to them by what turned out to be a bit of a bizarre penalty. But they were in the game at 3-2, and it, it's always dangerous. So there's still plenty of time to go in this game. 38 played. Billy will definitely want to be going into half-time with that two-goal cushion, something we weren't afforded on Saturday. But I think it makes it a much different landscape uh, uh, if uh, we go in th just the one goal, goal I ahead. I think it's got more to do with that Hereford team than it's got to do with us with the two-goal cushion. I think we'll come out and play the same either way, whether we've got two or one-goal lead at half-time. Or we, or we could obviously, in these last couple of minutes, Hereford could score twice. <laughs> you just don't know with football. I mean, look what's happened already in this game in the first 40-odd minutes as, you know, anything can happen. Um, but if you're going with a two-goal lead, I mean, that and Hereford players are going to be sat in that dressing room so deflated because... Oh, they've taken the throwing <laughs> quick, but the referee still brings it back. Yeah, they're, they're To be honest, there is still bottles on the pitch and players having a bit of a chat, yeah, so Hudson, that, that was a bit too quick. Looking to get the ball back in the play, but Hereford will know that they started this game as miles the better side, and we were definitely there for the taking, and a bit of a lifeline, a bit of a gift got us on level terms and we've kind of ran with that and that's going to be really deflating for those players to come out and know they've got 45 minutes to... to, to yeah. And at, th at that point you're going to try and rescue a point, aren't you, more than win the game from two goals behind. We're definitely one of the sides in the league you wouldn't want to be playing if you were, were losing. Obviously the, the kind of win by all means type of, type of attitude and it's definitely not the side I'd want to be playing against at 3-1 down. Because no. it's not not too bothered about making it particularly pretty and making sure we get that win now. Hereford just kind of knocking the ball around nicely at the back. I mean, they do play nice football and good football to watch, which is shown by the very impressive amount of followers they have in the ground this evening. They usually see a bit of a decline in the attempts on a Tuesday evening, but full credit to these guys. Hereford now playing on this near side. The laptop's in the way of the bar, so I can't see it. <laughs> We've got 31 people in the stream. We thank you all for tuning into our stream because we know there's a few options tonight. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for... Uh, hopefully people don't... Are there really? Thank God. <laughs> Go <laughs> off here. <laughs> well, it's free. It's free to watch us. It's not free to watch national Lo national league TV. And although we were late, we were up and running. Yeah, and yeah. with the complications that the uh, streams have been having, we're assured we're supplied with Matty's hotspot. <laughs> and down in now with the ball inside the centre circle for Hereford, coming into the alpha and half, gives it to. Cameron, who plays it out wide to Skinner. I mean, Varos back to Skinner, back to Akiki, back to Varos. I mean, it's 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 tidy football, but oh, it's nice. Oh, that's a good ball into Texera. I mean, he looks really tidy, Texera. He looks like a player I'd like to have in my team because <laughs> he's really tidy. As I think Crow uh, Cowley looks to Oof. come inside, but Jerry McDonough looking to hook the ball away, but Hudson does well to stop it from going Jerry McDonough brings it down again looks to flick it over his head and Hudson takes it off him he's got two players to get past and a block from Adam Lund knocks it out for a throw in right next to the corner slot flag on the near side we will not we probably won't see Hereford launch us into the area as the, uh, uh, um, Mendes comes short gives it back to Hudson or oh, lovely L drag pass back to Mendes who Ooh, Brisley put a well. teasing ball into the area but yeah Brisley does very well to head the ball away as Cowley looks to do a nice chop inside but a great turn from Dwayne Wiley as he finds the feet of Billy Fuster who looks to come forward and he gets oh, it oh that'll be a booking I imagine yeah he gets no, between ref. Cameron and Mendes on the counter attack and he's brought down I think he was looking for it but he's won it well, for it to have a free kick just inside the own half, on the towards that far side, Willis will probably play a diagonal ball across the pitch, looking 
that area what Jerry McDonough and Jake Day occupy. Ooh. George Willis hooks the ball forward towards Kennedy Diggy, who heads it down, but he couldn't get it back across the area, and it goes out for a goal kick. Oh, Hereford Curtis Pond is going to be eager to get this ball back in play. I mean, Hereford have tried to counter the win-by-all-means mentality of Alfred and by getting the ball back on the pitch as quickly as possible at every given opportunity. As I'm checking around the leagues, this is Hereford a winner throw-in. Buxton have taken the lead at Peterborough Sports. This is the only goal update I have for you at Oof. the moment. Ball is coming to the stands. Very As, never mind. Warrington have just scored at Farsley Celtic. Yeah. And that was an interesting thing in the uh, Fools blog article. The um, They wrote that the poor conditions on the Farsley pitch won't have been much of a problem for Alfred because the ball will have never have been on it, which is just <laughs> <laughs> just quite, quite comical because it, it, was, it, was, it was close to slanderous. <laughs> <laughs> what, on the Farsley pitch or all? I think there was no need for the dig at Farsley, really, oh. was there? Jake's Jake done Oh, he's done really well as he finds a, a, a gap between the legs of oh, that ball Aaron support. Skinner and the ball goes out to Nathan Newell right on the touchline who keeps it in. Akiki now going to stop him coming forward. He turns back and gives it back to Adam Lund who has a bit of space now to whip it into the area and it's looping Ooh. and I, I've maybe got a bit overexcited <laughs> there because I thought Jerry McDonough was arriving at the back post but too far away from him straight out for a goal kick. I think the angle I was looking at on that was a bit misleading because it looked like either Jerry McDonough was going to head it in or it was going to go straight in as it had caught the goalkeeper out, but there was actually never any danger there. Four if added you could, minutes if in you the first half. couldn't hear that, if you, there is four minutes added on. Yeah. <coughs> I'm sure our Hereford fans would be wanting a bit more. Yeah. But a lot of the time wasting has just been George with a stood in his box waiting for someone to close him down and no one did for about a minute and a half well uh, hopefully that all oh, brilliant play on the right side by Hereford the the chance to put the oh, ball into oh. the area and Ken Diggy dives in gives away a free kick on that far side yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he picked up a booking for that challenge because the ball was released by Akiki as Diggy dove in and kind of took him after there was no danger there Alfred and it looked like they were going to deal with it the referee doesn't seem to be reaching into his pockets, just giving Kennedy Diggy his yeah. final warning, which that, which is very generous for me. Yeah, I think he's probably lucky there. Lucky to escape the referee without receiving a booking. Hereford looking to put the ball into the area. A lot of big bodies in the area, although they like to keep the ball on the floor. They do have a bit of height in there. The ball is whipped in. Jake Day uses his thigh to flick it over the bar and Hereford will have a throwing. Not a throwing, a corner. Apologies for that. I was just, I think one of the games just went half time and I was, uh, I got a notification, so I was trying to see if it was actually a goal or half time. Minute 40 played of the added four. Hereford whip the ball in and out, swing it towards Cowley and Cole can only go ball. out for another corner and it kind of hit Sean Brisley in the middle, Warrington extend their lead to two at Fars, it kind of hit um, Sean Brisley in his chest here and there was G's for a handball. I mean the, the handball on Saturday was given against Ken Diggy and we've watched it back. It wasn't even Ken Diggy. It was a, it was a Sean Brisley hand. And another outswinging corner for Hereford. It's up, it's flicked on, but Dwayne Wiley's there. And it drops to Mendes, who struck it first time well. Back into the area, asking questions, but deflection. I'm not sure who it came off. I want to say either Adam Lund or Ken Diggy, but it's in out. In recent games, we've been conceding at really poor times. Yeah. And obviously on Saturday was seconds before the half-time whistle, and we've got 20... One minute, 20 now. Bavos, Bavos now with the in-swinging corner this time, taking corners on both sides. It comes in low, and oh, Jake Day swings and misses, but it's dealt with by Claxton, and Dig, Dig, uh, Day gets well it away done. once again, and 
A ball looped back into the area from Mendes over everyone and out for a goal kick. Ken Diggy now just feeling his ankle in a bit of discomfort. One minute to play of the added four. Diggy has been playing f not at 100% recently. We know he's had some issues with his knee. He's had some issues with the cut eye. He's, he's really kind of... Been in the war. Been in the war. It's like when you've <laughs> been out to play as a small child and you've been playing football and you've come in and you've got bruise here, cut here, and your <laughs> mum says, oh, you've been through the war today, haven't you? That, that's what it's... Uh, that's, that, that, that's, what, that's how I'd describe Ken Diggy's last month. <laughs> also, Jerry McDonough keeps the ball in, flicks it towards Jake Day in the centre, but it's cleared away by Hereford. Headed down by... Cowley and it's gone out for a throw in at the dugout for Alfred and who Joshua Claxton picks the ball up. I'm sure he will. Ten seconds to play. Take a the leisurely stroll. I mean, four added. You might see a little bit extra. Yeah, I'm sure that once this ball comes into play, the referee will blow his whistle and he does. And that is half time. Well, it scores. was a game that looked like was going to be dominated by Hereford in this first half as they took an early and deserved league but a gift and a lifeline came as Jake Day turned the ball in to the goal on the goal mouth after a great ball into the area from Josh Claxton it then got worse for Hereford as Billy Fuster rifles a superb strike into the top corner to make it 2-1 and then Lund crossing the ball in for a great he Ken Diggy header that went over the goalkeeper to extend the visitors lead to 3-1 we're going to take a break now for half time, but we will see you when the teams are back out for the second half. Thank you, everyone, for listening to us for this first half, and we'll see you soon. And we're on. Welcome back for the second half of Alfred and Town versus Hereford, the official live watch along. And well, the, just the Hereford boys are out there. I know Alfred and boys out, but slowing the game down already. <laughs> the Alfred and boys ran right in the first half after a shaky start. A start that looked like Hereford were going to turn us over, and we looked like we were there for the taking. A, a gift and a lifeline <laughs> that saw Jake Day get us back on level terms has. A quick Turn the game the on its head and the boys in yellow come back out now and Ooh. press the yeah there you go Portsmouth minus four <laughs> <laughs> should we have a quick run through the scores in the league so uh, we're up to date Darlow 1-0 up still yes Darlow 1-0 up against Blythe Chester and Southport are drawing 0-0 Farsley Celtic 0 Warrington Town 2 Gloucester and Tamworth are 0-0 Peterborough Sports 1, Buxton 2, Rush All Olympic 0, Brackley 0, Scarborough 0, Curzon Ashton 1, South Shields 1, Shirley 0 and Derby are 0-0 with Reading, Portsmouth are 1-0 up against Burton and Notts County are 1-0 up against Crawley and Chesterfield are beating Oxford 1-0. But the referee's back out, the ball's back on the centre circle and Hereford looking to get us underway to start this second half, I'm sure... It'll have been an interesting dressing room to be in at halftime after they looked like they were on top and looked like they were really ready for this game. But to go in two goals down, I feel harsh to them. But since that equaliser from Jake Day turned the game on its head and everything's everything, gone our way, hasn't it? And I think we're seeing 
McDonough come off the pitch for Jordan Thewlis, which seems like a defensive substitution as Thewlis will... Um, Billy's made a point that he asks more than any other winger in the league and he likes to see his wingers track back and play almost as an extra fullback at times. So McDonough, who's mainly taken up a high position, almost as a second striker on that right-hand side, I'm sure we'll see Jordan Thewlis look to create more frustration and provide more support for Joshua Claxton on that side. Well, we are just waiting for the second half. And we're to underway. get underway, and we are going as Hereford. And I've started the timer. Yes, and we've started the timer. A 25 of you with us for the restart in this game. Thank you all for watching. As Saw a always. stat on uh, our analytics the other day that said only 30% of people that watch our stuff subscribe. So if you are watching and you're not subscribed, it's nice and simple. It's just below the picture. One click of a button and it does help us. So if you could do that, that would be great. And we'll see it come in. And you can also comment then once you're subscribed. You can say, oh, Matty, that's a lovely hat you've got on. <laughs> even though you're inside. <laughs> you can also put in some abuse towards Vaughn, who's not shown up for an away game. I know, part-time. <laughs> Volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Mendes plays the ball out wide to Aaron Skinner. Now on the near side to us. Gives it back to Texier, who I've actually been really impressed with for them. He's one of those players where he's my kind of player, you know, kind of sitting deep. A little lad as well. Nippy. Ooh. Oh, and a slip from, I believe, down in, but Texier recovers and gets the ball to Cameron Skinner. I mean, we're, we're really frustrating them, forcing them to make audacious passes, and that's resulting in the ball being... Just like then to Adam Lund, who easily knocked it back to George Willis. Cowley now skipping past a few players. George uh, Cantrell going in for that 50 50, headed up in the air by Dwayne Wiley and flicked away by Adam Lund and George Cantrell after that. Jake Day giving chase, but it's cleared away by Cameron. Ball back into the area. I mean, Hereford fans going frustrated because they are falling into the trap of. Aerial drill after aerial mm. drill with us. Something we've been very good at this season. A stat posted by the National League or the Vanarama about us being <coughs> what the more the, the sign that wins the most aerial duels per ninety in the country. Yeah, they're just well, no comment. <laughs> As Cece looks to come into the area, skips past Claxon, oh, fires save. a thunderbolt, and George Willis does really well to palm it up into the air, headed back towards the goal by Akiki <coughs> but George Willis does really well to grab hold of it keep the score at 3-1 I mean that was a really well struck effort from Yusuf Sisi on the far side but Willis palms it straight up into the air strong wrists and Thewlis now flicks the ball up towards Jake Day Cameron Heads it out, brought down by Babos, finds Mendes in the middle, goes back towards Downing at the back. And then all the way back to Curtis Pond in the goal for the hosts, out to Skinner. Second half starting now, we saw the majority of the first half being played with. Oh. George Cantrell gives away foulers. And it's it's not plays. really a booking, is it? Uh, <coughs> it's a bit iffy because Cantrell has lunged after he's released the ball, which I think is why the referee's chosen to book him. Had I been the referee, would I have booked him? Probably not. But I'm not a referee. And you'd be biased anyway. Oh. I, don't, I, don't think that's a f I don't think that's a f I think the only reason it's a booking is because it's a good ball down the line and it's come after that. So I think if he's going to blow for the free kick, he has to book him because otherwise he's going to get dog's abuse. But the actual foul itself as an isolated incident wasn't wasn't that bad. I don't think it, 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 no, it wasn't a bad foul, but I think it was more that the ball's been released when the foul's come in. But we can agree to disagree. We're big boys. We can talk about it for two hours on the three and a half hours on the way home. I'll be throwing you out, car. <laughs> Picked up, Cowley now brings the ball down. Cuts in on his left foot. Dwayne Wiley dives in with the slide and challenge wins it, but it only goes to Mendes. Put back into the area. Cowley now looks to strike. And I've 
who was that? Oh, was that Hudson looked to flick it towards goal, Lewis Hudson, but couldn't get a strong connection on it. And uh, the Hereford players already running to get the ball to put it on yeah, the six-yard box, six box for Willis to take. But there is a man down in the middle. <coughs> Referee checking on the condition of Sean Brisley, I believe, who is down Hereford fans have no sympathy because there has been a, a, a little bit of time wasted we won't lie there'll be just a bit and uh, Lewis knocks it towards the head of Jake Day who flicks it on nicely but it's won by Hereford knocked back forward and Teixeira now in the middle looks to flick it towards an, a, an attacker but it's cleared away and now Fulis had a chance to run forward but couldn't get the ball out of his feet before a challenge came and he loses it to Hudson Teixeira now looking for and a very Willis, and Willis will take his touch and he's going to make the Hereford front man run all the way up which he, which he does Mark says go on Alfred and up to fifth and that's why this game is so important for our playoff hopes. We want to be in and around that kind of nice cushy fifth, fourth place yeah. position. I mean, we'll we'll take this we, will look at, we will look at the league table because it's looking rosy right now. Obviously, we're, we're, we're still only flicked on by day towards 50 Jordan minutes played, seat. but currently yeah. sat in fifth on 63, Chester on 62. And the last remaining spot in the playoffs is Curzon on 61. Boston are in 8th and 59, Warrington are in 9th and 58, and Hereford have gone down a position and are now on 58 points as well, but haven't played a game more. So, <coughs> four points inside the playoffs and two teams below us have played a game extra. As it stands, it's looking very rosy. Yeah, and it's... Oh, but well now... Hereford come into the area, Claxton ends up on the floor, the ball comes across the area, it's flicked up to a Kiki at the back Ooh. post, but it's a 50 pence head. That is the last uh, time I read, read, read the lead tape and I was there on the attack. Yeah, but it, it, that, I think that emphasises how important this game is. That, 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 that's a live league table, isn't it? That's a live league table, yeah. So that's a five-point gap between us and Hereford. If it was the score was either way around or we were still 1-0 down, we'd be behind Hereford. And now we're fifth and they're, what, tenth? A, a Kiki, Liam. Yeah, Just very important. We knew that, we knew coming here that it was going to be a massive game and we've put ourselves yeah, I, I think a, a minutes in a Hereford really, really good position. Obviously being two points behind us before the evening, a win for them was really imperative. I think the big thing is as well, like we'd lost, we hadn't won in three before Saturday. That's a call for a sub, I think. And Cantrell boots the ball away. He points toward Lund, who's down and struggling. Hereford fans, no sympathy as Chesterfield double the lead against last place Oxford City in the National League who will be not to be too preemptive and I can't imagine the odds would have been great on Ox on Chesterfield today playing bottom of the league in 20 points compared to the top Adam Lund having played I mean I've got the, f the stats guys next to me I think somebody told me the other day 44 games on the bounce 45 games on the bounce Lundy um, <laughs> um, we did question the Hina game but he did play in that as well. He was skipper. Uh, he's receiving <laughs> treatment. We actually, you know what, we usually rate how fast the physio runs on. Didn't even see it, so it must have been quick. Yeah. Competitive game, yeah. He knew it was a competitive game. It was Derbyshire County Cup. <laughs> yes, yes. He was skipper that day. He was skipper. He played centre-back. Not going to so lie, we'll I could play the Derbyshire County Cup. like. <laughs> We've uh, we don't want to see him come off. <coughs> no, can't see. Well, he's going to have to go off, regardless yeah, of whether he's staying or not. <laughs> but I can't see anyone in too much of a strenuous warm-up. <laughs> Adam Lund. Oh. <laughs> Thirty-two of you in the stream. Thank you all for watching and. If you are here and you, d you want to get involved, get subscribed and let us know in the comments where you think we'll finish in the league Oof. come that final day of the season on the 20th of April against Scarborough. Third place. Liam's saying third place. Bill s Bill I, think, I think he's bumped his head this morning. Hereford down the right. Good ball, ball across. Comes in, cleared away. Easily Jake Day backing up into Cameron now, who's 
going to do what he can to try and stop the ball coming back forward, but it doesn't. Cantrell blocks it and stops it going out. And you know what we've not had today? We've not done... We didn't do score predictions because we were right against Wall, and we've not had a Steve Cottrell pred uh, a prediction today. We usually get a... Is he watching? He should be. Oh, brilliant. Oh. Well done, I'm sure there. Oh, Derby oh. County and Reading's now 1-1. Two quick goals in that game. To be fair, we didn't do our score predictions today. 3-1. Three 3-1's one. my prediction. Two goals quick. Back to back. It was two goals. Really Brackley quickly. have taken the lead at Rushall Olympic. Rushall kind of, I think, struggled without Danny Waldron, who left for Southend, I believe. Can anyone? Yeah, Liam's nodding his head. Southend. He, he, no, he um, obviously was at the top scorer in the league at one point uh, when we played them anyway. And uh, left for Southend. And I think they've struggled after that, but... Maybe they got a good bit of money for him, so. Cameron now looking to travel forward for the horse, who are weary and taking the time playing out from the back. And, I, you know, I, I'm going to, on the way home, I'm going to be waiting for some sort of post-match reaction from the Bulls blog. <laughs> uh, don't go too early on that one. <laughs> Although the ball has fallen nicely to a few. Uh, oh, it's a foul. It's a foul as I believe it's Mendes wins a <coughs> free kick deep in his own territory. It's down in. Hastily brings the ball forward and plays a sideways pass to Nathan Cameron. Starting very deep now and kind of letting them bring the ball into. Well into our half. Towards Cissé. Claxton looks to challenge. I mean, Cissé has put his foot on the ball and kind of fallen over. A couple fans cheer for a free kick, but nothing in it really. I think he's just slipped on the ball. Bad first touch, sees it go out. The throw in for Alfreton. Yeah. Alfreton. I don't know about the halfway line. <coughs> I like, love the correction. Yeah. He's right there. I'll tell you what. Sounds loud out there, but we're inside, so it's quite hard to tell. Yeah. Unlucky for them, it's nice and warm in here. Oh, the ball breaks. Harry Cowley now bringing forward a Kiki out on the far side. Nathan, oh, it's, it goes in behind Nathan Newell, who does well to shepherd a Kiki out. Oh, I don't, he does excellently. Really good from Nathan Newell. A shaky start to this game, but that was an excellent defensive phase. He looks to find Dare in the middle. He can't quite bring it down, and Downing's going to shepherd the ball towards his own goal as Dulis gives up on the chase to get back in a defensive position and a, a nice like, Cruyff turn from Cissé mm. sees him come inside but he received that ball in a lot of space in the middle there and kind of had the opportunity to, to turn with it pretty much unopposed and r run out of back four so Adam Lund's done really well to stop him in his tracks and I think he turned where the players were though yeah. he's turned into the middle of the pitch where yeah, yeah, we've got three yeah. centre halves and Adam Lund waiting to take the ball off him and little Lund kind of got his body in the way and shepherded it, and it was cleared away by Dwayne Wiley in the end, I believe. Keith now on the far side comes right into the centre of the pitch as he looks to find it's a clever yeah. ball in behind for Cowley, who puts the ball across the area, but no one arriving. I mean, he's not looked, it's a blind ball across the box, and you always run a risk with that if no one's arriving. The, the passing behind came out of nowhere. Cissé was running into the area, but he couldn't quite. Get there, and that's going to yeah. be a goal kick for Alfreton. Approaching the hour mark. I was just about to say that. You've read my mind. I was thinking, as soon as it's 59, approaching the hour mark, what are we looking at? Media team are taking some grief on uh, Twitter, unfairly. Leave us alone, please. <laughs> 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 back to Pond in the Hereford goal <coughs> once again hastily playing out of the back out to Skinner as he looks to find a ball into the channel towards Texera Cantrell can only turn it out for a throw in but he couldn't get it forward it kind of skewed off him and went out for a throw in closest to us 
about 34 people in this stream. We really do implore you all to get involved, get in the chat, give us a bit of grief. Don't give us grief. Be no, nice. Be nice. But we take enough grief on. Just take their heads it away. I don't mind the grief. I'll sleep at night. Nothing will be as bad as Southfields. <laughs> I just got terrored for an hour. <laughs> I found the stream and I just got <laughs> got terrored. Akiki now looks to play a one-two with Downing, but Lund or Brisley, sorry, is going to be able to shepherd it out for well a done. goal kick. <coughs> and Hereford are really eager to get the ball back in play every time it goes out. They are wanting that reset. There, I mean, we're getting to the point now where they are running out of time to get a goal back if they want a chance of taking all three points I feel the chances are dying and dying by the minute but anything can happen in football we were 2-0 up against Warrington with five minutes to go and we're goalkeeper scored an equaliser so anything can happen in football but as, as the minutes go I grow more and more confident yeah I think we want to be I think we want to be Sean Brisley knocks the ball high up into the air. Kiki looks to head it back forward and it's <coughs> skewed off his head and gone out for an Alfred and throw in now on the near side next to the away dugout. Well, as we talk about predictions for that final day on the 20th against Scarborough at Scarborough, I, I'd like to see a, a prediction. That I'd, I'd like to see us climb another space. There's always room for improvement. Oh, win the ball high up the pitch. It's been a a, a, a short while since we've had the ball deep into their half. Um, a Kiki now into Texera who looks to find a ball down the line. Skinner flicks it up and Diggy clears away. John Thulis is going to have a bit of space to head this ball. He looks for Jake Dave but can only find Cameron who looks to cut inside. A couple yellow bodies pressing high now but they're going to very eagerly drop back off and let Hereford have the ball in the area where they're not going to score. Cissé now out on the wing who looks to get down the wing but just dribbles the ball out of touch and off and have a throw in now on the far side where jo Joshua Claxton will take oh, so we forgot to mention obviously Adam Lund received cheating and went off the pitch he has come back on and not missed a beat yeah he's we don't want to see him go off obviously the big asset of, of the throwing but also so important in that middle we've obviously this season picked up a few assists recently picked up a goal on Saturday at Farsley as Oh, wow, that's a great challenge from Bri uh, from Diggy. But Babos finds a chance to shoot oh. and he scores and that's 3-2. Hereford have a lifeline and they have a chance. Just as time was running out, less than half an hour of play, Babos, it looked like it was a great challenge from Ken Diggy who just got a toe on the ball. But no one swept up and he got the ball back under control, got around a player and got a shot and it went down the mouth of the goal past a fall in George Willis as he came to make himself big and Alex Babos shortens the Alfreton lead as Portsmouth go 2-0 up and Gloucester have taken the lead against Tamworth three goals in about a couple of seconds there the ball down the line for Skinner and you can feel it you can yeah. feel the momentum I mean the we're game is coming here, to life so we're not completely in the mix but you can you can hear the noise from out there it's definitely raised raised the tempo and obviously now they'll, they'll definitely feel like they want to come on and and uh, and push for an equaliser knocked over the top down and now he's going to look to go home as Jake <laughs> Day it's a bit of a tough ball back. It's a, it was a bit of an ask for the keeper a bouncing ball one in the air with a bit of venom on it we sat really deep, and I felt like if we we were just inviting the pressure on there, yeah. and it was that we we hadn't got up the pitch for a, for a long time, and, and or had any possession in their half, um, just happy to happy to kind of absorb the pressure, but um, as we give another free kick away, midway into our half on the far side. <coughs> Sixty-three minutes played. These lot have a chant for every player, don't they? Yeah, no. Good set of fans. Not seeing the attendance. So Darlington extend their lead to two at Blythe as the great escape continues. A ball into the box from Hereford. Cameron Ooh. headed it towards goal. 
just wide. And if you missed that, Darlington have gotten 2 0 up at Blythe. The great escape. What form they're in. What form they're well, in. Well, when they. As we. Um, well, obviously, early kickoff on Saturday was Spenny Moo and Darlo, and it was the most informed team versus the second most informed team in the league, Darlo and Spenny Moo. Obviously, Spenny Moo were winning 2 1, which made Spenny Moo the most informed team in the league and dropped out a second. But, yeah, I mean, Steve Watson's got them playing. Yeah. Obviously, when we went to Darlington, we came out Looks two like winners. the referee is having a word with... The Hereford mm. Courtney Stathers. If you so it, look, it looks like he's pointing to something that's happening over there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but we're... Um no, the game's not being stopped. We're getting back underway. George Willis is going <coughs> to send it long. It's up towards John Dulis, who loses out to Hudson. Knocks over the top from Hereford as Sean Brisley heads it over to Nathan Newell, who has pressure on from Akiki and goes back to Willis, who clears it out for a throw in on the near side around the halfway line for Hereford. Yeah, we're not. We're not looking after the ball. They're getting it straight back. We need to look to have a bit more of the play because if we let them play how they want to play for the next 25 minutes, we'll do oh well not to good see Good bit of football, though, as Billy Fuster comes down this near side towards he gets past one, but a deflection off the heel of uh, Cameron means Alfred and will have a throw and Adam Lund makes his way over. Lewis Salmon there. Lewis Salmon books a few weeks ago for drying the ball for Adam Lund. He's not done that no. today. You can't be picking up fines twice in a season for drying the ball, can you? Lundy goes short to Newell. A lot of Hereford players switched off there as the ball comes into the area and it's headed towards the goal and it's just wide of the mark and Hereford will have a goal kick. Kurt Pond gets the ball down quickly and he's going to... The ball, the throwing went short to Newell. I mean, we know that Newell's got a good... A good um, delivery into the box and I'd love to have seen that ball come from that from that side with his left foot instead of going back to Lund who had to take the cross under pressure I think that could have gone in earlier yeah ball out wide now for Hudson John Thewlis dives in and he ends up on the floor the cross comes in towards Cowley who heads over the bar good, good chance hands on heads here in the stands of the Hereford fans but it never, the when it left his head, the moment it left his head, he never felt like it was going to end up in the back of the net. George Willis taking a sweet time. Hereford manager, <coughs> hands on head, as Willis <laughs> does what he can to run down the clock. The, cl the clock? The, co the clock. The clock, yeah. Ready? People think I've been drinking. I've not. <laughs> You're, you're driving me home, so I hope not. <laughs> had a cheeseburger at half time, though. No bacon. Head down, Clacky now. He's going to try and get there, but he wins a throw in. Uh, it looked like he was fouled, but the referees just give the throw in. Hereford. Hereford Cissé picks up the ball to try and take the throw in. Referee yeah, shakes his head and points. I think our it, way. It'd have been an Alfreton free kick before, and it had been, but before it had been a. Hereford throwing, I think. I think he had come over the top, but I think the ball had already gone out. So Long throw from Claxton nearly reaches the halfway line as Cantrell wins it and looks over the top for John Thewlis. Cameron does well to knock it down, but it's a great ball in behind for Jake Day as Billy Fuster finds himself in an area, puts it across the box. John Thewlis stretching with his neck to try and get Still there. Still options on here. But it goes over. He'll keep it in. He's against Skinner. Mendes comes over. He looks to put the ball across the box and he'll win a corner. Well played. And that's just the difference. I mean, when Hereford are winning a throwing in the own half, the fans are banging on the sands, and <laughs> you get this big cheer, and we win a corner, and it's just flat. <laughs> Good interception from Skinner. The corner's not been taken. Lewis Salmon went to pass the ball to Lewis, uh, to Billy Fuster, and no, no, he's on the bench. He went to pass it for him to take the corner, and. Uh, he was his pass was placed in a way that it was going to take longer for Billy Fuster to hit the corner. It's going to intercept it, but the corner comes in. It's headed out towards 
Bavos, who can't quite get it under control. It's going to go over to Claxton, who's going to whip the ball back towards the corner where it was taken. And, and now take a throw <laughs> in, in the corner flag. Yeah, Akiki heads it out. Look, definitely having more controlled possession. On I, mean, it, I genuinely feel like a throw in is more dangerous than a, than a corner in this kind of position. So The last ball went short. I think this one is going to come in, although I think last Newell, time there Newell was is putting himself in a position where he could get it. He is a He's coming short. Teasing the idea. Yeah, Bavos has followed mm. him in. I think last time there was quite a few Hereford players switched off. All 11 Hereford players inside the box. That's come... It's a, it's a poor bizarre. throw in, but it's going to Dealt with really poorly. The, under no pressure there. He could have done whatever he wanted yeah, to clear the ball. Yeah, there was no in. pressure. The keeper was coming for it. The keeper says, why didn't you leave it? And the... I believe it was Cece on the front post said, well, why didn't you shout? Yeah, Hereford player running half the width of the pitch to get the ball on the, the corner spot. Now, it's Old Britain, obviously not that bothered about speeding the game up. Leifusa going to deliver this corner in, and it's a whipped one towards the goalkeeper. It's going to come back out, and Lundy's going to have another chance to launch this into the area. This is a good position to be in because it's just running down the clock as we find ourselves deep in enemy Lundy territory. Lundy is jogging across there. He's, there's a difference between slowing the game down and... Yeah, he's and not walking. He's not... You know, he, I think he's be obviously been wearing up to pick up a bucket. If he's just walking over, the referee's going to be like, oh, wait a minute. The long throw comes in from Lundy. Headed away. Bavos now looks to Lundy. clear it. Lundy Ooh. looks to hit a strike. And we might need a new ball. That oh, no. It's, oh, no. It's, did, it's gone out for a throw-in. <laughs> that won't make the highlights. Send. We're going to see the first change for the host tonight as Andy Williams enters the fray for Lasana Mendes, who, for his biggest highlight for me of the night, was confusing me because he's wearing the number 20, but the team sheet says number 21. Although Ollie Southern on the bench for Hereford's number 21, I imagine that is just a typo. But while he comes on, we'll have a look at some of the typos on the team sheet. We've got George Willier. Um, Wait, I've seen another one. Nathan Jewell was yeah. the other one. <coughs> <laughs> Jake Nate got a few laughs across. Jake Nate, Jake Nate, um, Farsley, yep, got his name wrong. <laughs> Warranted a lot of horse puns from me in the first half before that. And, you know, it was like, oh, yeah. Joke's gone. No more, no more stable jokes. Hereford now with the ball. In the final third, we go all the way back to Texera, who goes all the way back to Downing on the halfway line. Texera back to Downing, who comes forward into the midfield. I mean, it's nice link up here from Downing at the back, but George Cantrell wins it back and he looks for Billy Fuster, who can't get past Cameron. And yeah, and he, he does need to be a bit stronger in that challenge. He's kind of flicked his ankle in there to try and flick it over and, and that Dwayne Wiley could pick himself up a buck in here that leaves us with oh there's a, there's a I think Jake Day could f find himself in a little trouble if the linesman's got anything to say about that while he's picked up a buck in I, I didn't see anything Dwayne Wiley's been booked there was a push between Jake Day and no, it looks like the Lionel's waving his hand saying like he's doing he's doing this, which means get on with the game. Oh, now he's going over. There was definitely some pushing going on in the middle. Jake did raise his arms. It wasn't enough for the player to go down. Hereford fans chanting off. No, no, it doesn't look like anything. He's not blowing his whistle to say he wants to speak to anyone. <coughs> well, a lot of anticipation here. Right? Um, and he's come back over and the game's... Oh, no, I think oh. he is going to book Jake Day by the looks of it. Who's protesting his innocence. Sean Brisley also over there talking to the referee bit of confusion to what's going on here. I don't know if he's going to pick up a book in. Yeah, I think he has picked up, up a book in. So that leaves us with that leaves us with uh, Nathan Newell, 
Claxstone, Diggy. No, Clacky picks up yeah. a booking early on. Yeah. So all on bookings. Oh, I thought you. I thought you were saying there were not. I thought you were saying. No. So we've got a lot of players on bookings now. What's that? Four or five? Four. Four bookings. Wiley. Three. Did. Three you of them being sent. Three of them being in in, in defence. So a couple of the players on a tightrope now with. 15 are normal to play. Favos delivers for Hereford into the area. Headed away. Diggy heads it away again to Hudson. It comes to the edge of the box for Favos, who puts it back across. Headed away by Jake Day. Teixeira now on the edge, who looks to find a Kiki. Back to Teixeira, who loops the ball up towards the back post as Josh Claxon heads it out for a corner. Hereford fans up in arms as they want to see their team get back in this game. This is such an important game for them. They will not be happy if their side comes away with a loss to do, especially the people who write the Bulls blog. Although I look forward to next season's preview. Might be the league. Corners come really low. Didn't look like it was intended to, but it's back out to him. Ball into the box. Looks into the area. And Willis will now. catch that Willis easily, easily and to and the ground. Down. The referee straight over. Crawley equalised against Notts County. <sighs> Notts County, man, what's going on? The uh, the fans in the ground are actually counting the time in which. Yeah, but th those one. those aren't seconds. Derby have retaken the lead against Reading, who went and picked up a red card. Never mind. And I'm just checking around if we've got any. Ball over the top. I think Willis is going to come and collect. Oh. The ball, boys and girls. Doing Charlie have also equalised against South Shields. Not a bad result if that stays a draw. I'd prefer Charlie to get beat. Fans now counting the time it takes them to take a goal kick, which yeah, is actually. These aren't <laughs> seconds, they're doing two seconds a second. <laughs> and there's no actual limit. That Kiki intercepts the ball kick from Willis and it's knocked over the top by Babos, but Wiley will head down. A Kiki picks up in space and he comes central and Lundles as well to get um. away and he's brought down by a Kiki who lunged in to try and prevent Lund coming away with the ball. Offer to have a free kick deep inside their own half. Approaching, well, we're into the final 15 minutes coming on the last 10. It's been a great game of football, a great game to com commentate on. And it'll mean that much more if we come away with the points. Mm. Willis looks to clip it over the top, but it's central. Downing heads it back towards the Alfred and half, and it looked like Andy Williams was going to get in behind, but he's just kind of mm. missed the first touch. Newell hooks it out of play for a throw in now. Skinner on the near side plays a quick one two with Babos and. Comes inside, gives it back to Babos. There's a second ball on the pitch. Referee, blow the whistle. <laughs> so fat, the assistant coach on the near side. Of the near side of He's well. looking very dapper. Got his a tie on. Got a suit and tie on. Well, he's actually got a coat, a shirt and a tie on. Hereford take the row in quickly on the far side. Texera goes back to Downing. Back to Texera. Just hastily playing the ball between each other. As Downing comes forward with a bit of space. Finds Babos in the middle. Drops it back off to Skinner, who looks to whip the ball into the area. It's headed towards goal, but by Williams, I believe, the substitute, and Brackley have gone 3-0 up. That's Rush Hard Olympic, but the header by Williams... Brackley 3, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the header by Williams, no ending of the target, and George Willis will have a goal kick. 11.30 to play. Plus stoppage time. Willis taking that goal kick in good time. Loops it along. It's a great win by John Thewlis in the air. Back. Adam Lund looks in back and John Thewlis just in an offside position. Posi posi position. Skinner keeps it in, gives it back to Pond. Curzon Ashton have gone 2-0 up against Scarborough. Down in now. Gives the ball out wide to Hudson. Back to Down in once again. Hereford will hastily play the ball out from the back. 
the kind of move the ball, ball around simply and then try and get together a little passage where they play off of each other. Out to Cameron. Nathan Cameron on the right-hand side looks to play the ball out wide to Akiki, who once again looks to cut inside and he flicks the ball up and it's cleared away by John Thulis. Jake Day looking to be oh, run in behind ridiculous. and Curtis Pond has to come for it. He heads it away. George Cantrell brings it down, plays it through. John Thulis now coming down the, le the left-hand side. He's going to try and cut in. He's got Teixeira against him. He gets past um, Skinner. He's going to put the ball across oh. the area, but he can't get enough pullback on the cross and it goes out for a goal kick for the horse. It's a good opportunity that to get a good ball into the box. I think he's the, the touch in which he couldn't get out of his feet meant that he's ended up having to scoop it in kind of unbalanced and not in control but if that first touch it was better out of his feet I think it would have been an easier cross into the box but again only Jake Day in there so not much to aim at yeah. CC brings the ball out on the far side he's up against Claxton and he gets round him and he gets into the area he puts it across the box and Cowley looks to turn it towards goal but can't get enough on it. Cleared away by Nathan Newell. Hereford have a throw in now on the near side. They take it quickly back into play. Skinner goes to Bavos, back to Skinner. Back to Bavos. He's going to look to put it back into the danger area. It comes across and into the hands of Willis. Burton get one back at Portsmouth. That's 2-1 now. Willis drops to the floor in the goal mouth after collecting that. Is it 2-1, Burton? 2-1, Portsmouth. Yeah. It's now Crawley have taken the lead against Notts County. Ball sent long by Willis. Jake Day gets up against Cameron. Cameron wins it. Oh, it's Dwayne Wiley hooks the ball straight up into the air and it's taken a bounce. And frustration as the Hereford fans as they want to see their team jump on that. Knocked forward by oh, Jake Day's going to be. Jake Day. Ooh, on a book in, pulling shirts like that. Brave. I don't think there was too much too much in it, but he has to be careful. Under 10 to play, plus stoppage time. We want to do it with 11 men. It's gonna be Only the one goal in the second half, four of them coming in the first. Hereford taking the lead and then giving Alfred a lifeline with a bit of luck, but you get that when, you, you know, when you're pushing for playoffs. You do need a bit of luck, and they ran with that lifeline. Got a comfortable 3-1 lead. Hereford have got one back through Alex Babos. And they're now pushing for an equaliser. Yeah, Claxton's dive, got the ball up. and he's going to look to clear down the line. Oh, and he does. Ball. It's a great ball. Jake Day's going to give chase. And Downing goes all the way back to the goalkeeper. He gives it to Teixeira, who's dropped really deep into his own half now to pick up the ball. He's carrying it forward. Plays the ball out to Cameron. Ryan Taylor being summoned back to the bench. That would suggest... We are going to see him entering the field. Yeah, that, that might be the right decision given Jake Day being on a book. And he's, he's going to have to battle for these balls later on as CC comes away from Claxton again. George Cantrell gets in between oh. them and he's brought down by CC. There's a lot he of fans moaning around. That is a dead cert foul. Yeah, he's got in front of him. CC has put his hands on his shirt and tripped up George Cantrell. And Hereford are going to make the next change of the game as Kieran Phillips enters the pitch for Cowley, I believe. Or is it Hudson? Sorry, sorry, my, my mistake. Lewis Hudson is going to make way for Kieran Phillips. So looking, Tamworth have got an equaliser against Gloucester. Brackley have had a goal disallowed. She is live, scorn. Some with one. And Brackley have had a goal to taken off him. It's over here. I'm looking forward to just there doing the scoreboard and on Saturday. As predicted, Jake Day is going to make way for Ryan Taylor. Came back into the side off the bench against Farsley. He was in really good form before he picked up an injury. It was the f first time we've seen him back in action on Saturday. Nearly scored on his return as well. Had a good header saved. Yeah. Um, and I think he'll just look to, to work the Hereford basketball in possession because Jake grafted up there and as he's tired, they were getting more and more free play. And, and early Ryan doors. Taylor knocks it in behind for John Thulis. Curtis Pond quick yeah. off his line to so. come and collect it. And he takes the kick quickly. He's looking for Kieran Phillips. So it looks like and 
Willis is going to make the Hereford player graft to come and pick the ball up and safe in his hands. Yeah, half time sub. I mean, it is, and it's a substitute with intent for Hereford because they took off Lewis Hudson, who was the left back, and he's been replaced by. Kieran Phillips, who was the highest player on the pitch there, who is definitely looking to play in the attack off the right-hand side. So it looks like they're going to some kind of three at the back as Skinner's dropped in a lot deeper. George Cantrell looks over the top as Billy Fuse to give chase to Cameron on the far side. Don't foul. Cameron goes all the way home to his goalkeeper and oh, he nice. really calmly plays it into Texera yeah, in the middle ball. who looks to carry out. But great graft from Billy Fuse to, to prevent him from carrying that towards the halfway yeah. line. Yeah. Teixeira back on the ball now. I mean, he has been he is so important for Hereford. If they are without Teixeira, they are without a massive part of their game. And we've been really impressive tonight. The ball goes over Cowley now. Jordan Fulis looking to put pressure on, but not wanting to give away a foul. Cowley the looks to flag a ball through. Did he get hold of it anyway? Flag goes up, he, uh, and Willis was there to come and collect. The final five minutes. Well, it looked like we were there for the taking at the start of this game as Hereford started so strongly. But a, a gift, huge, a lifeline. Huge attendance of 1,949. Great attendance for a Tuesday night. Yeah, ne ne nearly 2,000 on a Tuesday <laughs> evening. Is. Bill's year of birth. <laughs> John Thewlis looks to turn. We've got Splife have got one back against Darlington. They make that 2 1. Darlington will be holding on for the last five minutes there. Cameron looks to carry it out. Tech share now. Hereford hasty in the one half once again. Skinner, who's going to look for a Kiki out on this far side. Newell steps up. He looks to play the ball around the corner. I mean, he's asking a lot of his teammates. It's been flicked through. <gasps> Cantrell into a challenge. A Kiki now who's going to try and play the ball across the area. He looks to go past Cantrell, but Cantrell's not going to have that. And a great George. turn. Finds Nathan Newell, who runs out with Kiki hot on his heels. Oh, finds Nathan Ryan Taylor. Newell, That's a great a ball. That is. Ryan Taylor does well to bring it down. Can he? I think he's just going to clip it into their half. Oh, oh no. no. They've poor. tried to be a bit too clever. A 1-2 between Newell and Taylor. Doesn't come off. But, but we win the ball back. Fuster now picks the ball up in the middle. He's going to drive forward. He's got space. He's coming forward. It's a three on two. Billy Fuster. Looks for Ryan Taylor out wide. It's Poor asking a lot pass. of him. It's really in front of him, but Billy Fuster's legs must be tired at this point of the game. Nathan Newell does really well to win it back. Taylor turns, I mean, and th this is where you see that football league quality where that first touch Line, disguised oh, didn't it. He, Nathan didn't need to be offside there. Yeah. And as we're into the final three... Coming up, we'll see that board go up very, very soon. I don't think... Who has... Your, your mate's called Man of the Match. Oh. Yeah. Number four. Oh, yeah, Tech Sherry. Yeah, he got Man of the Match. I, I wasn't listening. He has. He's very good. Uh, Fuse now pi uh, picking the ball up in the middle of the park. Not many white shirts running back towards their own goal. Billy uh -huh. Fuster going towards the corner, looking to run down the top. Tech Sherry putting pressure on Fuster. Surprised not to see him much any more urgency to get the and Hereford will what have a throw in. I mean, it looked like they were hands on Billy Fuster there, but. Where's he taking that throw in from? I know. <laughs> Down now with the ball in his own box, who looks for a switch towards a key key. Only towards Newell, who heads it up into the air. Bavos brings it down now. He's got Lund putting pressure on. He looks to find Phillips, he gives it to a key key. Nathan Newell looks to step up the ball, comes down no. the line. Oh, I mean, he's tried to buy a, fr a free kick and he's got one. Bavos, as he goes down, there wasn't really anything in that. I think the referee's going to book Adam Lund there. I mean, oh. The linesman's given that, so he must have seen something that we couldn't see through the... Uh, he, missed a, he must have seen something that didn't happen by the looks of it. Not, <laughs> not to be too harsh. <laughs> we said that on Saturday. Alex Bovos now stood over the free kick. He's going to deliver this so into the I don't the think area. he did book him in the end. Claxton sneaking a couple yards on the free kick there. Bavos swings it into the area, headed away by George Cantrell. Oof. It must be said George Cantrell has been really important in defence tonight. Flicked in behind towards a key key. Uh, 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 not for the first time comes comes out. He's 
And it's a, a goal massively kick. important player, a goal kick. Into the last minute of normal time. I think we'll, we'll see four or five minutes here. Yeah, I don't think the time wasting has been too hideous. The, the the ball boys and girls have been on it, so have the Hereford players yeah. to get the ball back into Buxton play. Buxton go 3 1 up now after they were 1 0 down against Peterborough Sparks. Yeah, Willis now preparing to take his goal kick. Oh, God. Shivers. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that was. I get him sometimes. Willis goes long. 20 seconds left of normal time. Fulis looks to knock it down towards Ryan Taylor. It's cleared by Hereford. Brisley heads it back up into the midfield. Babos knocks it down for Cissé. Baxton on his back. Goes back to Teixeira, who's happy to turn. I mean, he's really good on the ball and he's trying to make something happen, but he's struggling now late on. Skinner out to Akiki. Five, Five minutes five added, added on. Minutes. John Thewlis nicks oh. the ball. He's going to drive forward. He keeps it in. I think he'll be going to the corner. He is. Ryan Taylor, the only player. Oh, no. Ryan Taylor's making an effort to get up, but he's also got... Oh, and it's George really Cantrell. good from Fulis there. Gets to the line and... Uh, and we're going to throw in deep, deep into the... Yeah. Near side. Really good player. John Thewlis running down the line. Teixeira putting pressure on him. He gets to the by and it looked like he was going to try and put a ball across the box for no one. But he turns back and plays a pass to Ryan Taylor who plays it off. Teixeira who closed him down to win a... Rowan, Adam Lund's going to take his time. He's been told to hurry up. Ryan Taylor looks to bring it down. He does well to put it across the box, but Go no one in there. Keeper, I think. Curtis Pond, one minute nearly played of the added five already. Curtis Pond looks to go long. That rhymed. And he's, he's brought he's it. I mean, it's out. a great wow. pick out <laughs> for the out. substitute, Andy Williams, inside Williams. the box. I mean, wow. he's kicked that ball a good <laughs> 50 yards there into Ooh, the box. Handsome. He's, Andy Williams looks to bring it down and his touch literally goes into the hands of George Willis who once again is going to take his sweet sweet time to send this long it goes um, Teixeira heads it and it goes behind him which Harris fans won't want to see no. he picks the ball up 1 minute 30 played of the added 5 come on boys played into the midfield of a dropping off Cowley he looks to play the ball out to Skinner who is hasty bringing the ball forward? He doesn't. They don't, they, it's the time where they don't want to waste possession because if we get a spell on the ball, it's ultimately going to run it down. Teixeira plays it back to Downing. Ryan Taylor providing pressure. He looks to find Jerome, not Jerome, uh, Cameron. Nathan Newell clears all the way to Pond, and it's another attack. But this one so is George really Willis. poorly oh, smashed <laughs> he's down on his from knees. halfway. And I tell you what, I've just seen a few Hereford stand, fans stand up and start to leave after that. The ball has been smashed from the halfway line. Of for a ball into the area. All the way into George Willis, Oz. unopposed. And he is going to take every single second he can. Well, I've got uh, a little story for you. Southport have scored at the last kick of the game at Chester. They had a goal and now the match has ended. That was 1-0. Preventing the great escape. The ball in to Alex Bavos, who scored the second for Hereford. He turns, Cantrell gets it away. Out to Skinner, who puts the ball across the area, headed away oh no. by Brisley. Ryan Taylor That's said never a foul. in pressure. He tries to, I think it's Downing, tries to buy a foul. John Thewlis now using his body. He's done very well, Jordan Thewlis. He, he Thewlis. is doing Brilliant. very well. well and done. he wins a throw in. Two minutes left of stoppage time. Uh, it's coming right down to the wire. Hereford making a substitution. Adam Rooney is going to enter the fray for Cissé. Not the time you'd make a substitute, really, would you? But Well, he's going straight into the front line. Lundy's literally just going to do what he can to get this ball down the line. Yeah, Lundy's taking a throw and on the halfway line and he's going to look to probably launch it. Hopefully to get flicked on by Taylor into the corner flag. Oh, wow, that's a great throw. He throw Jordan Thewlis, he's... he's Texture now in his own box with pressure from Jordan Thewlis. And Jordan Thewlis, wow, excellent. Wow, wow, excellent from Jordan that. Thewlis. That's not a foul either. Play. 
Akiki now with the ball. He's going to have to bring it forward quickly. Less than a minute to go on the clock. The ball's on the line for Cameron in the centre half. Now finds himself towards the no, corner flag. Nathan Newell's no, put his shoulder in. I mean, it, I do think Cameron buys it. Nathan Cameron buys the free kick. But and he, the goalkeeper is going up. We seen the, We saw this on Saturday. 3-2 up. Going into added time. No, he's not. He's already on a booking, so he's not walking off. The keeper, I mean, they've left Teixeira back. <laughs> You're putting the keeper forward and you're leaving a player back. 30 seconds on the clock. Alex Bavos standing over a free kick for Hereford. Every player in yellow in the box. Goalkeeper forward. Curtis Pond on the edge of the area. It's got to be a good delivery from Bavos. It comes in. Look, it's cleared away by Wiley. It's a corner. My heart is going pitter patter. <laughs> Alex Bavos now stabbed under over the corner. It's all, it's almost this kind of same position as the free kick of the corner, just a little bit further out and obviously right on the byline. Everyone in the area now. It comes in. It finds the feet of the Curtis Pond. It's struck by Skinner oh. and it's found the back of the net. It's a flexion from the flying alpha and bodies at it and it's found its way into the top corner. There's a wicked deflection. Takes it past... George Willis and at 3-1 down Hereford have rescued a point that has to be the last kick of the game it's heartache such disappointment for Alfreton it's a really tough one to take the keeper's done brilliantly there to, to retrieve the ball and set him and the it, it, you just felt like it needed a nick to take it in. I think without it, it probably does. It probably gets saved, but it flicks it up into the air, and it's a looping one. And it, I think as soon as it took the deflection, it was going in. It's so hard, really. Curtis Pond with the assist, the goalkeeper. I mean, it's hard to take. No, we'll past the 95th, and I think that'll be it. And that the will be blows it. The whistle. Hereford rescue a point, not the worst result. But when you were three-one up at half time, you've got to. That, that, that feels more like a loss than a draw. Yeah, I mean, when at the start of the game, up, you probably would have taken the draw. But have a snap your hand off but, after the first but, 10 minutes. But uh, it's a disappointing one so late. We dropped points late on at, um, at Scunthorpe not too long ago. We dropped, and it, on Saturday, we it, they had an opportunity late on to take a point off us, but we managed to take all three. I felt like we had, I felt like we'd done enough there to to kind of keep the, bring the three points home. Wow, well, it's, it's a disappointing result when you were 3-1 up, but in hindsight, a draw is not the worst result in the world. It's, it's, it's the worst things could have happened. We could have, we could have lost the game. We still keep a two-point gap on Hereford. I'm sure there'll be a, plenty of Hereford fans on Twitter after this, giving us a bit of stick, but it's frustrating from 3-1 up to 3-3, right at the death. And it's one of them ones where you've got nothing to say because it's so hard to take. Okay. But Tamworth is next to win at Gloucester <laughs> after being 1-0 down. So that, that, that brings an end to the stream for tonight. A 3-3 draw from 3-1 up, 1-0 down. It's been a roller coaster of emotions. Six goals, a, a good game to watch, but we're going to go home with a, a feeling that we should have got all three. But thank you once again for watching the Alfred and Town official live watch along. We'll see you on Saturday against Bishop Stortford at the Impact Arena. Thank you, everyone who's tuned in, and we'll see you then.